aim of our project is insurance claim prediction approach using the logistic regression of machine learning. This project is made by S. Arvind, Anshika Jain, Durum Shashank, S. Rajvamshi and Mundi Shweta. This project was made under the guidance of Dr. Nidhi Lal, Assistant Professor at CSE Department at IIIT Nagpur. This is the abstract of our project. Claim provisions are crucial for the financial stability of any insurance company. In this paper, we age-based, lifestyle-based and BMI-based insurance claims are based. We approach to the claim accuracy through the logistic regression model and put an effort to maximize the accuracy score of the model. The keywords which were made in the paper are insurance claim, machine learning, logistic regression, accuracy score and the mean absolute error. For this logistic regression model, we have used Python 3 to implement the same. In the first set, we have imported from the warnings package simple filter and we have given the action as ignore. This ignores all the warnings which comes during the execution of the code and makes the code much more presentable. Now we import all the necessary Python packages which is required for this logistic regression model. We import pandas which is required for reading the CSV file in which our database is stored. Then we import numpy for all the mathematical and matrix based calculations. Then we import seaborn and matplotlib for plotting all the data which was used afterwards. Then from the sklearn packages we have various imports. That is from linear model we directly imported the logistic regression model. And for that the logistic regression model we imported accuracy score and the mean absolute error. Now for training and testing the data we have imported sklearn.model selection train test plate. And for the saving that model we have imported joblib. Our database is stored in insurance2.csv file. Using pandas we have read this file that is insurance2.csv and allotted it a name that insurance.df. We, we then use insurance df.info which gives the information about the data set which is available to us. As we can clearly see there are total 8 columns and there are total 1338 entries. The parameters were age, sex, BMI, children, smoker, region, charges and insurance claim. Then we printed this insurance df to get a tabular view of the data set. As we can clearly see that is 0 from 1337 that is there are 1338 rows and this column the insurance claim which was the previous data and we will use this to obtain our data set model this gives the correlation between the various features of this database for this we use insurance DMs of correlation this is a direct feature in python 3 then we printed this correlation to give this following table this table gives the correlation which is the relation between different features and the parameters. Then we actually printed it in a graphical format using sns.heatmap which is a feature of that seaborn. And then we use matplotlib.pyplot to print this graph. This gives the relation between the different parameters of the data set. This column shows all the data parameters which are available to us. And this row also has the same parameters. So that's why the same parameters will always have correlation 1. That is, this diagonal elements will always be 1. The main thing which we are concerned with this column, which is the insurance claim prediction relationship with other parameters. As we can clearly see this, the bright areas, which is this BMI, and smoker, have pretty much high significance on the insurance claim prediction. And this darker regions like children have an extremely negative correlation with the insurance claim prediction. We will see later that what it exactly means. The below code enables us to print all the data set in a graphical format. For this we have used SNS that is Cblown and matplotlib that is PLT. For this we have used countplot to count the number of insurance claims which were made and it was then separated using the cat plot according to the age, sex, children, smoker and region. You may pause the video in between to see the graph, graph properly.
This block specifies the size of the data set used for model training. We must specify the range to select a portion of the data set. Here, we are using the whole data set that is 1338 elements. So we are not giving any values. And we are storing this in DF train. Now, we apply logistic regression model on this data set. For this, we are using train label and train data to store the data again in as, array, as in array format. Now, the NumPy package has feature as mean and as standard deviation, which is required for this data to get normalized. So, we are actually saving the mean of that data in mean and the standard deviation in the standard STDS and we are actually remodifying the train data as train data minus mean by standards which gives the normalized data. Now, we, we are using an insurance check as an object to call the logistic regression class using the solver LBFGS. This is a pretty good solver which gives us a pretty accurate predictions. And now we are fitting this train data, this train data and this train label into this insurance check object. Now we plot the feature chart to get the influence of various parameters on this insurance claim prediction. From this graph it is clear that a person who is a habit of smoking, a person who has a high body mass index has a higher probability that he will claim for an insurance. And this, the higher the number of children, the less chance that the person will claim for insurance. And that age, charges, gender and region do not have any such influence such influence on the insurance claim prediction. Now here comes the most interesting part. We are actually training and testing our logistic regression model. First, the model is trained for the first 100 times using train test split. As we can see here, for i equal to range 0 to 100, that is for 100 times this model is being trained tested. And then again this whole procedure is repeated 100 times. That means the training testing splitting works for almost 10,000 times. Now z this z list shows all the percentage accuracy scores. That is each and every score is stored here. Uh, so in the end there would be like 10,000 values of the percentage accuracy scores in this z. Let this m denote the highest possible accuracy score and this me denote the mean absolute error for the range j equals to 0 to 100. Then uh, in this for loop, we are again using for range equal to i range equal to 0 to 100. We are actually train test split data of the train data and the train label. So actually it is creating like two sets, training and testing. The training contains x train and y train and the testing contains x test and y test. And the most important thing of this train test split is that it randomly trains it randomly splits the data set into training and testing modes. So it reduces the chances of redundant data. Now the X train and Y train are used for training the data set. Now this YP is the prediction which we are actually finding out using the testing data. And P is the testing scores which compares the Y test and the YP. That we test the testing values of the Y which means the accuracy the insurance claim has been made or not along with the YP which is the previous insurance prediction. Um, if P is greater than M which means the current accuracy score is greater than M then M is allotted the value of P and this particular model is actually dumped into a model package called insurance model dot PKL and for this particular test case the mean absolute error is calculated and here it is actually printing the most accurate accuracy, accuracy scores and mean absolute error. As we can clearly see it's 94.3 which is pretty accurate and the mean absolute error as 0 0.056 which is pretty low. So this means that our model has been trained appropriately and it gives a very accurate and predictable results. Now we actually trained our date model using different size of parameters that is from 200 thousand and even the total set and using different sets that's for 200 using 1 to 200 for the 300 set we are using 400 to 700 and corresponding they are accuracy scores and the mean absolute errors were calculated 
for comparison purposes we actually we even actually calculated using the same data set the results on the original code which was already given now it's time to print it so we have import again pandas numpy seaborn and matplotlib here we actually converted all this above data into arrays which makes it easier to print in a graphical format now this block of code actually prints the data according to the above arrays which were present so we get this output which actually compares the accuracy score of our model with the original code as we can see the original code lies in the range between 84 percent to 90 percent but re on repeated training up to 10,000 times the model got better and our output gives in the range of 93 percent to 99 percent so we can see that repeated training and testing a model actually improves it and make it more predictable and accurate now in a similar way the mean absolute error graph is plotted as we can see in this case the mean absolute error should be lower to get a more accurate model so in the original code the mean absolute error was ranging from 0 0.10 to 0 0.16 but in our case it is ranging from 0 0.02 to 0 0.06 which is again a pretty good sign that our model is properly trained and will be very useful in future purposes all the code and graph which were used in this video is available on github on this following link you may visit it to get more idea on this this link is provided in the description thank you for watching this video and we hope that you understood what this topic and project is all about thank you and have a nice day